Spotlight Tuesday, August the 15th, 2014. Uh, Pete, believe it or not, it's been quite a few years here on Spotlight, and we've got a very uh, interesting show here tonight. I'm actually, for, uh, for those watching at home, this will be the actual only show that we shoot here in the summer of 2014. The reason being is because we have a lot of shows in the can, ready to go, and um, this show, I purposely set it up this way. This will be the show that will kick off, Pete, believe it or not, this show will kick off 15 years here on FR Media TV. Would you believe it's been 15 years already? Actually, we were just talking about that before the show, and I cause couldn't figure out. I said 11 to 13. I didn't realize it had been. No, no, it's 15. This will kick off 15 years, give or take a few weeks. We can't obviously nail it right on the head, but this show will be playing for the entire month of July. You can view it, obviously, here at FR Media TV via the website. You can watch it um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wrestling spotlight backslash wrestling spotlight uh, and also uh, YouTube and on the station's media uh, uh, channel 95 in Fall River only so you have three different um, ways and venues to you know watch the show but tonight obviously with that being said we want to welcome joining us in the studio once again the man who I called his bluff last year and he made me obviously made me eat my crow and I'm not going to do it again this year but obviously just after this past New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame at the Crown Plaza in Warwick, Rhode Island we're to welcome back here to the show the founder the owner the promoter the publicity man and all huh. Mr. Joe Bruin. Joe thank you once again for joining us here on the show. Yeah thanks for having me it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I know we initially wanted to get you on prior but I mean and I think we had two or three dates scheduled but between your schedule, your you know your personal schedule, your work schedule, it wasn't feasible. But I said, you know something, I'll do it after the fact. Now we can look back at everything that happened on that day. Somewhat, it was like a 14-hour day. It was a long day. Just on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. It was and this now is this true? You were telling me. I don't know if you were pulling my leg. <clears throat> there was some stuff going on during that day, the events that you haven't seen yet. Yeah, I'm excited to to even get a glimpse of a clip because uh, you haven't seen aside from the Hall of Fame the three Q&A sessions I haven't seen one minute of either of them uh, so I want to let people know we will be having raw footage tonight well people sitting at home uh, need to understand is raw footage is as we shot it from one of the angles we had a three camera angle, sh angle shoot during the event um, the stuff is being edited together as we speak but I figured you know sometimes you just got to go raw and show you the raw footage and that will give you a glimpse and we'll talk about the whole DVD situation later mm -hmm. and so forth and so on but Joe um, like I said this will be available this is obviously airing today, uh, August the 15th here on Channel 95, FR Media. You can view it, like I said, on our website, youtube.com, backslash Wrestling Spotlight, and on the FR Media website. Um, and I'm just curious to see what kind of hits we're going to get on that now. And Because I know this show, you've got a lot of fans, uh, uh, people who have uh, uh, you know attended the shows in the past from overseas. So this is, just isn't going to be... A United States thing or yeah. Massachusetts or Rhode Island There's people overseas that hopefully will be seeing this so we're gonna be touching on a broad aspect of all this but before we get into any of this uh, two days after the as, as great as the event was mm. as the Crown Plaza you had surprises that I'm gonna get into yeah. because you called it last year and I totally overlooked it and I walk into the hotel after I checked in who is standing in the lobby yeah, we're gonna get into that, <laughs> and, and we're gonna get into that. But unfortunately, two was it two days after the event, um, we all lost a, a close friend, a, a, a young man that I just met for the first time that Saturday, and I'm speaking of Shu Aoki from Japan, who came down. So um, I just want to kick off the show. Obviously, the show will be obviously in the memory of him, uh, because you don't realize how popular someone is, how much of a friend someone is. He had friends all over the place. Yeah. So if we can, I'm just gonna throw it over to you and just reiterate a little bit actually what happened, what went down, and how you heard of it. Yeah, Shu uh, Shu Aoki has been, in my opinion, in my eyes, the number one uh, fan involved with New England Fan Fest and the Hall of Fame. Um, he first contacted me in 2010, and uh, I mean, I thought it was a joke. He said he wanted to come from Tokyo, Japan, and he wanted to uh, see the Savaldis the Savaldi family be inducted into the Hall of Fame and uh, you know that was just now this is back in when it was East Providence yeah 2010 East yeah. Providence <coughs> and uh, 
purchased his flight ticket, got his super ticket for the Fan Fest in the morning, and he came, and he was there the whole day. He had a ball and uh, really, really enjoyed the day, and um, he turned into a regular. He, he came every year, 2011. Um, and, you know, he, he wasn't just coming for the top stars, the top draws. He was coming to see Bad Boy Billy Black, uh, superstar Richard Byrne. Um, now, what would draw interest, no disrespect to anybody, but yeah. what, with all the stars there, what would draw the interest of him being in Tokyo to, like, a Bad Boy Billy Black or the, the, the Savoldis? Well, I guess that's the thing. I mean, uh, this is a type of an event where you could meet the top names, but you could also meet guys that you maybe won't see elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And especially outside the country, I'm sure of big events there, you'll see the, the Hulk Hogan's, you'll see the, you know, the guys on that level, but you're not going to obviously see, you know, that. And he knew the history of New England wrestling, and uh, he was a big fan of uh, karate and the background that Richard Burns was involved in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he wanted to see Richard Burns inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's a big fan of the ICCW. I was back uh, in the day, Joe Savoldi and all. Yeah, so he followed that stuff and he knew about these guys and it was nice to, uh, for, for the, you know, <coughs> us to recognize them. He appreciated that. He came all the way from Tokyo um, and it turned into a yearly thing. Like I said, he came every year. He bought a super ticket every year. His flight was 15 to over 2,000 every year. And That's uh, dedication right there. It really is. He was, uh, he was our number one fan and starting next year, New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, we're going to honor Shu. No kidding. Um, we're going to have the first ever Shu Aoki Humanitarian Award. And uh, we're going to kick it off next year. He'd um, love that. I mean, he would. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it's just sad that he can't he can't be there, you know, because yeah. uh, it'll be the first one without him. So it's, it's bittersweet, but uh, certainly well-deserved. And obviously that first award going to him. We'll get it to his family. Any ideas, I mean, later on as far as anybody speaking on his behalf? Uh, we haven't gone that far yet. Um, what it's looking like, there's going to be uh, multiple people. Just a quick no couple words from uh, just yeah. a few different people. Uh, that was a... Uh, he touched a lot of lives, so he's got a lot yeah, of... Yeah, I'll, I'll share one before we get any further, but one that um, I met him for the first time. I was, I was actually after the Hall of Fame ceremony, and everybody was drained. I mean, it's I actually, I think I went out looking for Howard, and I guess Howard stepped away for a second, and... She was there. He was there with Jose Luis, and they were taking pictures in the backdrop. He comes over to me, broken English. Uh, he says, "Oh, take picture, take picture." And I'm taking the picture. He goes, "Oh, again." I took a second one. He goes, "Oh, again." I'm like, "Okay, take a third one." Then I realized it was Shu. Taking three pictures. He goes, "Thank you, thank you." He's so appreciative that I took a picture because he liked Jose Luis Rivera growing up. Obviously, it's one of the Jose might have been the lower tier guys, but yeah. the name itself, when you watch old WWF programming, you know who the guy was. That's the name you see every week. So I, was, I hung around for a little while. I took the pictures, very appreciative. He comes back over to me. He goes, thank you, thank you. He kept thanking me for the picture. Yeah. I'm like, then I, I said, shoot, no problem. I said, you know, we had a little discussion. Then when we started talking, he went immediately to old school, the old stuff. Yep. The, he wasn't talking about the Hulk Hogan's or the... You know the the huge name. He was talking about the the enhancement talents, like like for example, like Mario Mancini. You were talking guys like that. And I'm like, and it hit home. I the conversation two or three minutes, but it seemed like I lasted an hour because the guy knew what he was talking about. Yeah. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, who would ever would have known two days later after just returning to Japan, he'd suffer the fate. You know, but. And he was a journalist uh, and photographer out of Japan also. He's 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 got a couple of interviews online. Yeah. YouTube. I was watching. He does a very, he did a very good job. Yeah. You know, yeah. so unfortunately, what was he, 30? He was 39. 39. And uh, I remember speaking to him at the Fan Fest on Saturday. He said he'd be returning back on uh, Monday to Tokyo. And uh, that's when he had a massive heart attack right as he returned on Monday. So he, he literally just got back into Tokyo uh, when it had happened. So that was... Uh, Do you keep in contact with the family? Or? Yeah, I've got yeah. his uh, his home address and... Uh, I've been in contact with some of his family via Facebook. Yeah, but, that's uh, good. That's yeah. good. And you know, it'd be—I'm not putting you on the spot, but I'm not saying next year. But knowing how Shu touched so many lives over the course of time, the last few years since he's like you said, 2010, and he returned in 11, 12, 13, obviously this year. Somewhere down the line, if his parents—I mean, if his parents could be there at some point, that would. Knowing the story that that Shu left, just knowing his parents, whether his parents are big fans or not, yeah. just knowing that 
his parents are there uh, to to pay to pay uh, respect to him in a way, knowing that this is what he came all the way here for, so they can witness the extravaganza for themselves. Yeah. I mean, I've seen stranger things happen. You never know, but uh, you know, God bless the guy. Really, I talked to him no more than five minutes, but biggest heart in the world. Biggest oh, really? guy. Yeah. Biggest guy. Brought me so, a bag uh, of gifts, and he did every year from. I've seen the gifts. Wow. And some really nice stuff. Yeah. And, uh, so you can't. I mean, it's lasting memories on those things. Um, but obviously, want to jump ahead now. Looking back, Joe. The whole weekend was you know, Friday, the VIP dinner, Saturday, and God, something spilled over to Sunday. It was just a big blur now. But looking back on paper, is it exactly what you hoped it would be? It was. It was. Um, it was a great crowd. Um, it was a huge place. So I didn't know. It was a new location for us, too. So I didn't know how we were going to do crowd wise. Um, but at certain points of the day, blows away the seaport. Yeah, yeah without a doubt, you couldn't even move. I mean, obviously the seaport looks super packed, but it didn't take much to get it to that point. So, even at points this year, it was uh, it was nice and packed at certain points. And mm -hmm. for a big place to look packed at that, you know, that tells you a lot there. Um, yeah, overall, yeah, I was happy. I mean, some of the vendors didn't do as well, but there's only so much money that can go around. Yeah, I mean, um, you have so many stars involved. You brought in the Husu, which we're going to get into in a minute, but. I mean, if you're if you're a diehard wrestling fan and you want to see the guys or the girls or whoever that you've seen, local guys, yeah. uh, local independent promotions. Um, I mean, who's like I said, we're gonna go over the list, but this is the place to go. I mean, once you get in the door, it's it's endless for you. It really is. I mean, it'll it'll take a full day. Endless. I mean, I asked you about certain people that I was looking forward to seeing, and I said, Joe, was such and such day. He goes, Yeah, yeah, he was next to so and so. There were so many people that unless you had a road map to to go around the fan fest flooring, right. there's no way of, you're gonna miss somebody. Yeah, to you be know? there as a fan, it must be uh, an awesome sight, you know, to, to have the time, you have the full day just to browse around. And just knowing me, and I'm gonna take this mockish moment out of the equation here, because I think being involved for over 20 years, you nothing amazes me, I don't wanna say amazes me, nothing wows me as much as it used to, but being that, me and my friends were there to document the entire thing on video was one thing, but knowing that you're filming guys who you've grown up watching on TV. You got Dory Funk, in fact, I'll get into it now. Scott Hall, yeah. I mean, that's the name itself. Scott Hall, X-Pac, I mean, the Godwins. Yeah. Still funny, big, big guys. Big guys, Okay, yeah. I mean, the guy that I, and I, I'm gonna touch on this a little bit later to Holly Race. After the Hall of Fame, I got with Holly really quickly. I says, thank you for all that you've done, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And he, you could tell he was tired. And I says, Holly, there's one match, one match that stands out over all and above is the match you had you had with Flair in the cage. Yep. That stood out. I mean, of all the matches that he had, that one stood out. I believe it was down to Carolina for the Crockett's. Yeah. It just it stood out. That and was it's one like, of the highlights of, of, uh, of the career, I would say, though, the entire You know, career. so then he grabs my hand, he says, no, thank you. I just thank me because yeah, thank you for watching and supporting it. And that really, that really hit home, because as long as the day was, as everything, when 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 the person that you're watching turns around and says no, thank you, there's a new fund of respect there, knowing that they appreciate what you've done for them over the years. Yeah. You know, um, Dory Funk Jr. I mean, one of the funks in the house. You uh, know. Yeah, it's rare that you're ever going to see him in, you know, in New England. If it could get any better, then it would have been Terry too. But at, uh, I don't know. You got surprises coming up. We'll have to wait and see. I didn't see this guy, Tony Guerrero. I wanted to meet Tony, and I don't know where he was. Tony Guerrero was with Pete Gass and Tony Atlas, uh, K&S WrestleFest. They were oh, kind okay. of all lined up, the three of them. Uh, Bobby Heaton, God bless him, and everything he's going through, Bobby Heaton was there also. Bobby Heaton, yeah, did yeah. very well. Uh, Joey Styles, another uh, one that I've known for some time during the ECW days. Uh, you got to love the Frank Howard Finkel. Uh, he's a tradition. <laughs> New England Fan Fest, he'll be at each and every uh, one of them. Uh, Deborah. Yeah, she looked great, right? Amazing. I mean, she hasn't changed. No. And this is what ten years later. She's got again no disrespect. She's got the body of a twenty-year-old. Yeah. Whatever she's doing, Stone Cold, uh, Mongo McMichael, you lost out on that one. But uh, and she's so down to earth too. Very she's nice. sweet. Yeah. She comes over to you, introduces herself. Uh, Taylor Hendricks, obviously. Maria Canellis is another sweetheart. Mm. Uh, Diane Hot Smith. I took a liking to her right away. First time meeting her. Uh, more than cordial. Comes over, speaks with you. You know, it just. 
being from the Hart family, you know, it's like one of the most prestigious families around. Without a doubt, it's like and royalty. You're in the presence. It is. Of it felt like royalty, yeah. and just with the whole accent, it's just you know, it's like I loved her. I mean, uh, hopefully she'll be back soon. We can talk more about that later. But um, obviously, you covered all your bases on this one. But let's. You started the event with the whole entrance of the stars. Now explain to me the concept behind it actually doing that because I know you didn't do it last year. Yeah, uh, last year we were going to do it. It was just a snafu, unfortunately, with the uh, the music. Mm -hmm. So uh, the format of the CD wouldn't work. It came down to that. So we had to scrap it at last minute, mm -hmm. which was unfortunate. Uh, this year, <coughs> it's one of those things that looks great on paper. <laughs> and the fans love it. They, you know, they, they want to see something like that. You get a nice entrance of each guy. And uh, I gathered them all up in the lobby of the hotel, and that in itself is... Uh, it only lasted. Task. It only lasted for so long because I know we had a game plan going in. Yeah. And the video crew's game plan lasted all but three minutes. Right. I yeah. had all 30 guys lined up. We're we're going through the back rooms of the kitchens to get to the uh, the other side of the hall, so I wouldn't have to go through. Somehow they just spied it off. Where the fans are. Half of the group ended up following me. The other half didn't leave right away and ended up having to go all the way around. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of people don't know. Uh, there's a guy in the kitchen screaming, yelling at us to get out. I heard that. You can't be back here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I cleared it with somebody earlier in the day. Clearly not him. But uh, so we made it through. I'm looking around. I'm like, man, there's only about 15 people here. Where is everybody else? And then I kind of see them way across the ballroom. I'm like, oh, this is not good. Entrance way is obviously only on one side. Howard Finkel's ready to go. He's got a list with the order. Of and Howard, Howard at that point didn't know that. They were doing two. Everybody thought it was coming through the curtain. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So then I had to communicate that to him, and it ended up uh, coming across fine. You know, everybody came out, luckily, but uh, mm -hmm. that was an interesting task to get that to work. Now, looking back, obviously, the Fan Fest, you've had how many stars did you have scheduled? For this one here? Yeah. Uh, we, 70? We had almost 70. 70 stars. Uh, we, Men on a Mission couldn't make it. Yeah, that's, uh, I was going to ask you about some health that. issues. Um, Sonny was under the weather, so he couldn't make it. Um, beyond the two of them, all the vendors showed up. Um, so that's phenomenal right beyond, there. Beyond, yeah. Uh, for super tickets, Scott Putsky and the Big O, uh, they bailed at last minute. I replaced them with Tito Santana, El Matador. I mean, that's a Hall of Fame upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so uh, really, just the, the four talents couldn't make it. That, after all those, that wasn't a bad uh, yeah. uh, substitution. Um, looking back at the Fan Fest now, I mean, I believe that you gave the fans obviously their money's worth. Uh, it's like you said, the hottest prospects that I think, and for what I did see, because I was running around also, one of a few of the hottest prospects there was obviously Scott Hall, X Pac. Sure. Um, trying to think who else was really hot there. Uh, Dory Funk. Dory Funk. Harley Race. Harley Race. Scott Steiner was. Seems like they're all in the same kind of corner. Yeah. Scotty Steiner was was a hot commodity too. Yeah. Big as a house. Big guy still in. Great shape and uh, yeah, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, seemed like he was good to work with. Um, um, yeah. Now the whole Q we're going to be getting to obviously a clip here, but the Q and A session, you've decided this year. I don't, I'm not sure we're going to be getting into it though. The the whole idea behind we had uh, you actually had the Q and A pass Hall of Famers. Yeah. Uh, the Q and A uh, with the referees. Yeah, reflection. Reflection. Yeah. Uh, we had the Q&A with the super, uh, partial super tickets. Yep. And then you had, obviously, the Hall of Fame ceremony. Yeah. Um, getting back, though, we're going to be getting to the um, story behind, you know, the, the whole Q&A. Was it something that you wanted to try differently? Or? It was something, I mean, you go to a Comic-Con, and there are events throughout the entire day. Um, the Comic-Con will still be going on in the main hall. You can branch off, go to a Q&A session with one star. That's just how it is. So I figured, you know what, let's try to make a full day out of it. You have the mm -hmm. Fan Fest going on in the main ballroom, and, you know, let's do, uh, let's do a panel of past inductees. I mean, there's so many of them in-house anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's have them talk. And if it's not a big crowd that shows up for that, that's fine. As long as it's caught on tape, we have it to yeah, uh, have as a memory forever and uh, could eventually put it out on DVD. Well, I noticed the toughest part was not that anyone wanted to miss it or, or they weren't interested in the mm. Q&As. It's just you had to pull them away from the Fan Fest. Because yeah. I know Rich Palladino made quite a few announcements. We have the Q&A 
happening in such and such a room, and I was like, oh, I'm not missing. One of the one of the young kids said, I'm not missing this. This is so and so sitting at the table, and there was a line. Yeah. As much as he wanted the Q and A, he wanted his autograph and right. photo that much more. So. And that's the thing. There's something for everybody. Um, some people go there, and they're just there for merchandise. Some people go there to meet the stars. Maybe the people that are there for merchandise would love to go to a Q&A session and don't want to meet the stars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's open to everybody, and the Q&A for the refs and the Q&A for the past inductees were both free to the public once you're in. That came with the general admission. That came with the general admission. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. The super ticket, obviously, was the most crowded. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that comes with the super ticket. Otherwise, you had to buy it separately. Yeah. If we can, let's, uh, Pete, do we have the first clip ready to go? We do. Okay, let's go to the first clip. This is the uh, Q&A clip of the past Hall of Famers, and this segment itself we'll be speaking, not speaking with, but actually looking back at um, Alex Payne, who now is a certified DDP yoga instructor. The only one in New England, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if we can, let's go to that short clip, and uh, we'll be back right after this. Lost my train of thought now. Uh, getting back... Let's touch on a little bit, uh, getting back, before we go jump into the second and the third Q&As. Um, last time you were here last year, you mentioned surprises. And I didn't know what you were talking about. And actually, I called you bluff. Yeah. But now, <laughs> what happened was that Friday night, I was, uh, I was out doing another event, and I checked in. It was about 1 o'clock Saturday morning. And I checked in. I turned around. I heard these voices. I checked in, and... Look who was there. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, WWE was in town. Yep, they were at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Now, center. explain to me. I know, I know. I mean, now, this is, when they were in the lobby, there were fans going back and forth. They were accessible by basically anybody who was at the hotel. I know there was a lot of rooms taking from fans who were there for the event. Yeah. You had Scott Hall, X-Pac, The Hurricane, um, John Cena's dad, John Cena Sr. Um, you had Fandango, Alicia Fox. Um, and maybe uh, uh, Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett was you know, there. How did that come about now? Was that something that you kept? Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, that's one of those things. Uh, you know, each year we try to outdo ourselves with different aspects, but um, there's, there's gotta be surprises. You know, 2010, the surprise was Mick Foley. Unannounced, walks in, sits down, starts signing autographs. That doesn't happen. You know, 2011, during uh, Chief Jay's speech, Bob Backlund walks in, back door, <sighs> right in gives a speech about tito martell that Chief did you Jay. know about that yeah he did walks right back to his car so, back to connecticut I mean, just for that drove in did the speech drove out and you know we have a, a surprise like that lined up every so year. what's that's telling me is that you have to attend the show because you don't know who's going to pop up you have no idea what's going to happen no kidding and uh you know rvd announcement last year um, just RVD just basically just uh, added last minute via Legends of the Ring. Um, that amazing. was a big deal. And, uh, and now this year, you know, Wade Barrett, like you said, and uh, Alicia Fox. Um, uh, who else was there? We had uh, Fandango and uh, Curtis Axel was also there. Yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I knew in advance that they were going to be staying there. Um, we put them up. FanFest put them up, paid for their rooms. Uh, we have a mutual friend in uh, one of the WWE producers who makes the video packages and stuff. And uh, we got that done, which was really cool. And I, I was excited. Couldn't tell anybody. Wanted it to be a treat for the fans. Didn't even know if you know anybody would see them, but I figured somebody would. If anything, I mean, you know, because first of all, this, this is the way it works. And I know when WWE comes to town, I'm not going to mention any names. When WWE comes to town, you've got those fans, those diehards that... Yeah go to the show, they know where they stay. When the second they stay, they contact their friends. Yeah. By the way, such and such is at the Crown Plaza where the Hall of Fame is. Well, you don't know what's gonna happen. So if anything if anything but happened on this was when Joe Bruin has a Hall of Fame Fan Fest, now, 2015, you gotta go because you don't know. First, Bob Backlund, Mick Foley. Jesus, you got local guy Fandango who made it to the W. Wade Barrett, yeah. Alicia Fox, one of the hottest divas on TV right now, yep. staying in the hallway. You see Curtis they Axel telling stories with Scott Hall, I and mean, Scott wrestled his dad, Kurt Henning. Exactly. Former tag champs, uh, you know, AWA. And Nasty Boys were there. Nasty Boys, yep, they were vendor guests during the Fan Fest itself. Uh, they were in there, they were they actually, that's a little story. I mean, that's, a, that's another story in the bar, they were telling jokes. Yeah. That was about, this was about, I don't know. 
two thirty in the morning. It was two thirty in the morning when the WWE guys arrived. Yeah. And uh, and that's the thing for any of the fans that were in the lobby or anywhere around, they took the time. I know because they signed the situation. all the, just to clear the slate here. If you think that well because the WWE superstars, nothing was to happen or this and that. That's not the case because. If you're in the lobby and you ask for an autograph, yeah. you ask for a photo, I've seen it, they did it for you. Every More than cordial, every everybody photo. was happy. Yeah, they didn't you know. deny anybody. And uh, Fandango even came out the, the following morning and uh, took Curtis some Curtis Axel did too, obviously. Yeah. And uh, so. actually, it's, it's looking back, it's what, what, what else can Joe Bruin throw on the table? And more surprises for the weekend. I mean, you mentioned the VIP uh, dinner. Let's go back to the, how did that took? Yeah. I obviously I missed it. It was our second time doing it. Last time was at the Seaport last year. It was uh, small scale. Taylor Hendricks, Barbarian, uh, Nikolai Volkov, Oscar of Men on a Mission, and then maybe 10 fans. Uh, this year, we had about 15 to 20 fans. It was the first 10 fans who purchased a super ticket. And anybody who purchased the Elite $500 ticket automatically got a dinner ticket. Uh, this time it was buffet style. Oh, jeez. And it was top of the line. You didn't food. tell me that. Oh, yeah, it was top of the line food, steak, and. Oh, you didn't tell me that. You name it. And uh, it was a great spread. Everybody was uh, cordial there, and the food was, was awesome. Um, now, how approachable at that point? I mean, all the VIP dinner. What we did is we put anywhere from one to three super ticket guests at each table. So the fans are eating with the stars. This is a two hour event, 5 to 7 p.m. They were there the entire time. Uh, wasn't every super ticket guest, but we had 29 super ticket guests, obviously. We had about 20 or more in the VIP dinner. So, I mean, you had a lot of star power in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting down with a couple of the fans. The Godwins are at my table. Maxine is at my table. You have Larry Zabisco over at another table. You had a bunch of fans on the opposite side. I remember Greg Valentine was over there. Bushwhacker Luke, Diana Hart, Jim Neidhart. Um, you had another table with uh, Clarence Mason and Matt Stryker and Deborah. Um, so there was a lot of talents in there. They all took the time to, it's not an autograph event, so you couldn't get an autograph, but if you wanted after dinner an individual photo with your favorite star, you get a photo. At the very end of dinner, we had a group shot, everybody together. I see that, it came out nice. And uh, we did that with everybody's camera. Um, we also had surprises. Where were you gonna get this? I mean, it's. Yeah, we had unannounced surprises come in, Scott Hall, he was part of the... Uh, Get out. He was there for a good half hour or more. Um, anybody that asked him for an autograph or a picture, he did it. Um, you did tell me that. Yep. Uh, Dory Funk, Marty Funk, Hollywood Heather. Pencil me in for next year. I don't yeah. care if... <laughs> uh, they all came in. Dory was taking pictures with everybody, even no though he was kidding. a vendor the next day. You're meeting Dory Normally there. Now, normally vendors don't do that. Right. Because basically what you get cutting into the wallet. Right. Yeah, but when they do that and they take it out from the from the aspect of doing it before i mean conceivably those people could be paying at the table but it shows you how now these vendor guests are giving back now yeah they want to make obviously the dollar that's how they survive that's how they yeah. make a living but cases like this just the love of the sport and the love of the fans supporting them all the time means that much more right and like i said we had the divas diana hart deborah uh maxine crystal marshall they were all in there for the buffet maria canellis and we had another surprise, Mike Bennett. He joined in, and he was in there for quite some time. Ring of Honor, Mike Bennett. Yeah. Oh, uh, jeez. Okay, uh, that was the Hall of Famer Q&A. Uh, Q&A reflection, we had uh, Paul Richard, Danny Davis, Billy Silverman, Jimmy Carderas. I mean, out of all those, I, the ones who actually told good stories, uh, they all did. Yeah. But Danny did growing up. Uh, Jimmy Carderas was a good one. Billy Silverman. He was so happy to be there, talking to him and, yeah. and just on the video, you could tell. Billy's a down-to-earth guy. We had him last year for the first time. He was a vendor guest. Uh, this year, coming back as a vendor, and now topping it off by being inducted into the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. He lives in New England. He's worked in New England for years and years. And uh, one of the most personable guys. He'll take the time. He'll have full conversations with his fans. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Christy, do we, um, we have that clip ready to go? Well, set to go. Actually, it was my screw up, and I apologize to everybody at home uh, tuning in. Um, I hadn't been, uh, didn't have it in order. The uh, first uh, clip would be of Alex Payne, right about the 31 minute mark, uh, 3135 on the, on the dial. So if we can, let's go to it, and we'll just hear two minutes worth of Alex Payne at the Q&A past Hall of Famers uh, table. So if we can, let's go to it. Good job. I do not. <laughs> so, unlike 
the other guy is another end of the table. I grew up as a kid in the 80s, and as we know, the 80s was the mainstream Hulkamania era. Everybody was a Hulkamaniac, especially in the Northeast. I didn't grow up too much about NWA or anything like that. It was WWF all the time. So, growing up, I just knew it was some, this, your question was how or why you got into the wrestling business. And I think it was instilled in me, you know, when I was five, six years old, but that's something I was going to do. Um, something I always wanted to do growing up. I watched wrestling religiously. And then right around, you know, 13, 14 years old, started to hang around a little bit more with more wrestling fans. And it was right around age 14, 15, the internet started to come out. I started to search. And my goal was I'm gonna be 18. When I turn 18, I'm gonna become a pro wrestler. And I had, I think, three schools where I wanted to go to learn. Joe Kowalski's, the Monster Factory down in Jersey, or over to Calgary. Well, that didn't happen. So I got a taste of what independent wrestling was. I didn't know independent wrestling existed in New England. And I got a taste of that by going to a couple of coastal pro wrestling shows in Seacon, Massachusetts, um, and New England wrestling run by Joe Eugenio down in the bedroom. South Shore area, South Coast area. So once I got that taste and realized I could probably do this, all the schools went by the wayside and I joined New England Wrestling at 15 years old. So I was really young. Not in today's days, a lot of kids start really young, but at that time, a 15 year old kid hanging around with a lot of 30 year olds or late 20 year old guys traveling on the weekends. I think my parents have little trust in me. Yeah, we're back. That was a short clip of Alex Payne. And we might have just shown you maybe a minute and a half, two minutes worth. But basically, we've got almost 20 hours worth of film. You know, give or take an hour here or there. But it's, it's a lot of film to go through. Different angles, different shots. And, uh, you know, I believe that this will be the one of the best packages put together thus far for the Hall of Fame. But now, uh, if we can, we're going to queue up. Uh, we're going to try and... Try to catch up a little bit. Uh, we're gonna have uh, words from Billy Silverman coming up, former WWE uh, referee, at the hour and 12 minute mark. Um, so, Pete, just give me a cue on that. We're ready to go. But you also had, if that wasn't enough, Joe, you had bikini ops. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we want to <clears throat> make the best of it um, <laughs> and just have all the options out there. You just, we want to meet every fan's expectation, whatever it may be. So. We had the uh, John Cena experience photo op. With spinner belt. With the spinner belt, which it's not a replica. It was held by his son. It's <coughs> one of one. I mean, when do you get the chance to hold that? Unless you know him personally. Mm -hmm. uh, bikini photo ops with Crystal Marshall, Maria Kanellis. Um, it was the first time that either of them have ever done a bikini photo op. Really? They've never been done that in a wrestling-related atmosphere uh, other than, you know, photo shoots. Um, so that was definitely unique. and. And something that the fans really enjoyed and it was intimate you go into a private room i noticed that you curtained it off yeah, it oh, wasn't yeah. like you were stuck in the hallway right people you aren't were, gawking at them or staring at them yeah. i mean they're they were off you know we had, there was security in there we had the extra staff and uh we'd let a few people in at a time and um you know that was definitely something something special I so think. that was definitely worth uh doing as far as that was a popular uh, yeah, oh yeah, we'll yeah. be we'll be doing bikini photo ops again next year. No kidding. That is for sure. Uh, let's see, uh, later on during the show, uh, we had the Super Tiki Q&A. Um, we'll jump in here a little bit. Um, but that came over really good um, and stuff. Actually, before, while Christy cues that Billy Silverman up, i got to jump ahead a little bit. Now, Joe, 2014 yeah. is behind us. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and I'm going to point, and I'm, I don't want to ask you, but I'm going to. Is there anything planned for 2015? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, contractually, I can't say too yeah, much, yeah. but uh, I love the venue this year. You That's said this last year, and I know you, you're kind of limited to what you can say, so I'm walking on it shows, yeah. and so are you. I am too. But <laughs> um, we'll have the date confirmed in a week. Okay. Um, so uh, you, our brand new website is www.newenglandfanfest.com. I looked at a fantastic website. Plain and simple. Yeah. No more weebly.this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. 
NewEnglandFanFest.com. You can log on. We have the countdown clock on there. Already. Already. So you'll be able to, uh, the countdown to the announcement. So we'll be okay. making the announcement um, in under 20 days. And uh, that's going to be the date. It's going to be the location. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be at the Crown Plaza. I can say that. It's not going to be the really? Crown Plaza. It was an awesome. I thought that place it was the perfect. It was a perfect venue. It, it, it was. Um, well, would it be some place you come back to at another point? Absolutely. I'd yeah. go back there in a heartbeat. Um, there's different reasons for, for what we're doing moving forward. My wheels are turning now. But uh, it's, it's uh, the staff was excellent. Yeah. The setup was perfect. Yeah. Everything went smoothly. I, no complaints at all. It's not that I'm not going there because of size or plenty of space for everything. So what you're telling me is you're moving to an undisclosed location for next year because you, how you can make it bigger, I don't know, but you're looking at a bigger aspect. Yeah, and, and we don't want to have... I want you to slip. That's what I'm trying. <laughs> when I say bigger, I, I don't. I, I'm. You know, we had almost 70 wrestling legends and vendors. Mm. Um, are, you, are you looking? We're not going to have 100 wrestling legends. Are you looking bigger names, possibly? Yeah, we'll definitely dip into some bigger talent, and that's that's what it is. The super ticket Ooh. this year, we had 29 super ticket guests. Yeah. 250 bucks. If you were lucky enough as a fan, you got it on sale for 200 dollars. Um, you break it down. That's pennies on the. It was over a thousand dollar value if you break it down and uh, next year we're probably going to keep the super ticket around 20 maybe 25 super ticket mm -hmm. guests um, prices to be determined but uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot now if this I mean I not that anything that Joe says now is or will happen but if, if there were a couple of names that you would love to see appear at a future Hall of Fame fan fest that you haven't used yet that you know the fans would be ecstatic about who yeah. would that be again not that i'm saying that they're coming next year or the year after but down the line because it seems like you're you're making this grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger if there's names down that you'd like to see here to give back to the fans who would that be and that's the thing when, when we say bigger i don't want people at home thinking oh man i mean what's he going to do add 100 wrestlers it's not it's not going to be like that it's going to be bigger Na name broader name, name value uh size of magnitude of the event whether it be advertising that goes into it, yeah. the size of the venue. Let me ask you a question. What's, and again, at home, I have no idea what the announcements I got you. You basically have told me nothing. Yeah. But now at this point, I'm not saying 15, let's say maybe 16 yeah. or whatever. Is there any contractual uh, conflicts for, let's say, bringing in a, a TNA name or a, a, a WWE name? And I'm not talking lower lower card i'm talking possibly a top tier name card for example like comic con brought in kane right you know can you go somewhere down that route or or is it the just the value itself wouldn't match up because those guys are getting obviously top dollar they're getting top dollar it depends who you get um a lot of the road agents are accessible for a reasonable fee that's not bad dean malenko arn anderson guys rotundo. like that rotundo barry windham yep. uh new age outlaws you know, the guys like that, Jamie Noble, Billy Kidman, uh, Joey Mercury. So, th you know, they're accessible. All the stars are accessible. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it depends on schedule. But some of the prices are just astronomical. Yeah, you could. Because you're taking them away from their element where they could be doing something else. And so you can't make, the whole point is you got to make money off the deal. Exactly. So uh, you're not going to see a John Cena on the Super Ticket next no. year. Maybe John Cena Sr. No, probably not. He, even he's been, uh, he's a tradition at New England Fan Fest, but he's been on so many Super Tickets. I mean, how many is he gonna, yeah, gonna yeah. be on? So uh, we wanna bring in some fresh faces. Uh, you've seen some repeats over the years, whether they be vendor one year, super ticket the next year. So we wanna do some fresh faces. Uh, me personally. What about Di Diane Hartsmith, is she coming back? Diane Hartsmith, uh, she, I would say 99% chance that she'll be back. She was a um, sweetheart. It was only our first year with us this year. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely see, not as a super ticket, but nothing, I could see but, a vendor. But there's nothing confirmed yet. Nothing confirmed, okay. but I could see a vendor bringing her it back. It just seems like the, the, the girls seem like they, they sell, again, no disrespect to anybody, but it seems like they sell better. When you have a diva's name like that, a female that's been in the business, yeah. it's, 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 it's automatic. Right. You know, so. Yeah, the super ticket, we try to get a, a good variety, too. You want some divas. You mm -hmm. want some legends. You mm -hmm. want some more current stars. And you want the obscure stars. And even mix and match. If you have two guys that maybe were a tag team, put them together. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that, it all helps. And uh, 
that's what we're going to continue next year. The super ticket, though, it, we're going to take it to the next level. So we're looking at cool. some some legends, but also some top tier names that you. You maybe blew my mind last year with Jimmy Valley. That was one of my. Yeah. You know. Christy, we have that ready to go. Let's go. This is uh, Billy Silverman in the, I believe it was the Reflection Q&A with uh, past um, uh, wrestling officials. So if we can, let's go to it. Billy Silverman from Maine. How did it all start? WWF, WCW, tell us all about it. Um, how it started for me was I was, uh, after my dad's best friend was a promoter for Vince McMahon Senior. Um, so I was kind of always around him growing up. thought he was the coolest and just always being around it and then Sam started doing some business with the Savoldi's, Mario Savoldi, Angelo Savoldi um, and I was around and then Tommy Bernini who was a New York referee through the commission and also an WWF referee, um, I was just from being around they asked me whether you know if I wanted to get trained to be a referee because they needed another referee and I was like yeah this is great and uh, from there I was trained by Tommy Owens, um, and it just really just had a life of its own. It really did. Um, I worked all over New England. I worked with Paul Rizzo in many different places. Um, I worked up and down the East Coast, and then I worked in Florida. I worked in Chicago, Texas. I just was always working because I just knew a lot of guys. Um, and from there, I had a break uh, to work for the WWE at the Boston Garden one time in Portland, Maine. Um, and then just kept going in my craft, and then eventually, you know, the more you know people, the more you get to work. And you know, my whole thing is I just always wanted to be a really good referee. Um, and so I just really was a student of the game. I got to work with Danny a lot, a couple of times, traveled with him a couple of times, and just really picking people's brains and watching what they do, the people that are really good at what they do. And so. And that was Billy Silverman. Uh, first time meeting the guy. But you have to, when you listen to him, he's so full of knowledge. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. he's been around between WWE and WCW. He knows his his stuff. He's put in a lot of years. We'll be queuing up this one next. We'll be going to the Super Ticket Q&A with Maria Canellis. Runs about a minute or so. Um, so Pete's going to give me the high side on that one. And uh, lovely lady, so smart, down to earth, yeah. uh, so approachable. Uh, it, it's uh, That's what this business needs. I mean, these people are on TV week in and week out. Yeah. And for the paying fan who pays to see them, whether at live events, orders a pay-per-view, orders whatever, you know, of their likeness, and when you go up to them, you don't want any headaches. I mean, I've come across so many people that, you know, you've watched over the years, you've supported, and sure. they're like, at the end of the day, you put your pants on just like everybody else. Yeah, she's you know? uh, she's not arrogant at all. No. She, she's down to earth. Actually, I think, well, the question that was thrown out to her in the Super Ticket Q&A was, how do you feel about those people who said, um, I forget how they worded it, but um, about you getting into this sort of a business, being a female in a male-dominated sport, and you'd be surprised by her answer. This woman is one of the smartest ones that I know about. Um, they're going to give you the cue on that one, but let's just jump ahead a little bit. Uh, at the end of after the some 12 hours later, we actually hit the Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, in, in Duxie, inductees uh, including Jason Rumble, Rob Zombie, Jim Neidhart, Mario Mancini, uh, a British Bulldog by his wife uh, Diana Hart Smith, Holly Race, Louis Ortiz, Steve Stallion, Kevin Charisma, among others. Yeah. Um, I know you did watch that one. Now, if again, I'm not being impartial, uh, but I really enjoyed. When Holly got the standing ovation at the end, it hit home. And I know he's not in the best of health right now, mm. but he attempted, he wanted, you'll see on the film, he wanted to get up and stand at the podium. He gave it all he could to, you know, to get you up. You know something, Holly, whether you stand at the podium, you sit in your wheelchair, it doesn't matter. No, the people. You know, you know, you know. but it was Holly and Diana. Diana's speech for, Davy Boy was heartfelt, and 
I li- and that was the first time I listened to it. She's telling stories what Davy went through throughout the years. Yeah. With the uh, was it the staph infection? Yeah. And nobody even he almost nurses. died from it. Yeah. Because he loved the business. Yeah. She didn't have to go that deep into the the story behind Davy and his love for the sport, but she did, and that gives you a newfound respect knowing that Davy did this, that, and what way beyond what any man would have did Peter for the Death love of the, of the business. the staff infection, laced up his boots, SummerSlam 92. If you look at that match, you would never have known. No. That next Fast day. Fast 30, 40 minutes long. That next day, I went home, and I watched that, and I'm like, son of a, you would never have known he had a staff infection. That's, it's amazing. You yeah. know, so Just God bless him. He flips that switch, I guess, and then you're. Yeah, he's one of the good ones missed, and, uh, you know, Hopefully one day, I mean, I know there's a lot of talk about Owen Hart, and he should, some people say he should be inducted, some say he shouldn't. There's a whole, the whole legality thing behind it. Yeah. Um, and with Diana, she was working on <coughs> Baby Boy's speech for months. She was preparing for it. She was really looking forward to it. This is the only Hall of Fame that Davey's in. Um, he was never recognized in the WWE. Why? That makes absolutely no sense. I don't know. It seems like sometimes maybe they shy away from, from those who have passed away. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I'm not too sure. With this whole Ultimate Warrior thing recently. And there's also so many people. I mean, yeah. who knows? Maybe they have Davey planned for a couple of years from now, whatever it may Let's be. not forget Jim the Anvil, Diane Hart. Jim the Anvil. That was a, a man who... Uh, that was a hot ticket. He ran the roads through New England for years and years. and uh, He's still not... Up until not too long ago, he was... Local doing some independent shows and yeah, uh, did the PAO Hall in yeah. Fall River recently or a couple and, uh, years ago and uh, you know, greatest guy to talk to you go up to him, he talked to you and that's what that's what again that's what fans want. We understand that the superstars, the divas have a, a hectic hectic schedule, but at the end of the day, you know the paying fan just wants that picture, wants to shake your hand, wants to yeah. get that autograph. I mean it's kind of a like a fail safe. Well, I did all this. And I want this back, and yeah. and and that weekend, if I had to say who was not nice, if you will, to the to the to the pain pro wrestling Hall of Fame fans, everybody was cordial. Yeah, everybody, absolutely. There was, you know, there was wrestling, but you got headaches. There's no headaches. No, it was it was everybody. Free. Everybody loved it, and it was sad because everybody had to leave. Yeah, you know, and it's uh. That's next what year. Mario Mancini was saying. I mean, he. You know, he's ready to go to the <coughs> next town. That's how he put it. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's nowhere to go now. And the, when Mario talks, and again, that's another one. He's another one that I met for the very first time. You listen to him talk. Yeah. This guy is... He has so many stories. He was in WWF for eight years, but, I mean, he's got so many stories. More than most. Uh, he, he's told a million of them. Um, During his Hall of Fame speech, he says, "How many matches? I think he said to the effect, how many matches did you lose?'" He goes, "I, I lost all but one, or whatever the yeah. whatever." It came. And I'm like, "But the way he delivered it was, I lost all but one, but it's not losing or winning the match. It's what he did in the match, and that's what I remember. That's what the fans remember. And sure. you know, Jose Luis, was, Jose Luis was another one. I mean, conquistadors. I'm like, I was the biggest fan of those guys growing yeah. up." And yeah. Mario was in an important spot for a long time to elevate other guys <coughs> to certain spots. But what was touching, and you know what I'm going to get to, is when Mario was getting introduced and Mario came up. And at first, he, he, he sat next to me under my camera, and I didn't, that had dawned on him. So, you know, normally they come down the center of the ring or yeah. <coughs> center of the aisle. He comes down with a bag. I'm like, what the heck's he got in the bag? Now, if really quickly, you want to touch on that. Yeah. What did Mario give you? Uh, he donated his trunks, his original trunks, um, signed them. Nice silver Sharpie, really came out bold. Um, and his WWF era boots, hmm. which are still in great condition. And he wrote right on the boots, 1984 to 1992. He always used those boots. That was the pair. He only had one set. Yep. And he said himself, it's tough to give up but he wanted to donate him to the Hall of Fame. Um, I mean, sure, it'd be awesome to have a building right now for the Hall of Fame. He did He did mention, I gotta ask you now, yeah. something down, do you have plans on getting your own building for the Hall of Fame? Oh, eventually I, I would love to have a spot that we could call home and, and say, you know. Even Vince doesn't have his own. Oh, right, I, I've got plenty of time. I mean, Vince has been doing it for mm-hmm. 20 years. And but maybe Vince doesn't want it either. 
Maybe, uh, yeah. but it's not that I don't want it. I do want it. Uh, it's got to be right financially, and you got to have. I can't just open a building and have four things hanging up. You know, it's going to take years of gathering objects to have on display. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate people like Mario Mancini, uh, Billy Silverman's donating one of his original referee shirts from his uh, WW, uh, WCW era. And uh, yeah, we've collected. You know, I've got Jameson's original attire. Mm -hmm. You know, when I dug him up and. He did the show in 2011 for us. Uh, right after his skit, he gave me his handkerchief, his glasses, everything that was. So now when you see Jameson on the road, those aren't the original WWF, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, Pete, if we can, uh, let's go to now a uh, really short um, clip of Mar Maria Canellis in the Super Ticket Q&A. And <clears throat> again, the question was, what do you say towards the people who kind of more or less talked you down or said you couldn't make it in a male-dominated sport and people said that uh, sort of thing. So let's go to it. She had the best, best answer of them all, so let's take a look and uh, we'll be back right after this. And you had to deal with all the naysayers saying that oh, it's not going to happen or why are you going to do that? What was your strategy to get through those people? You know, I always had to ignore those people. I had to realize that they were the ones Whatever you're fighting for, there's always going to be somebody that tells you you can't do it. There's always going to be somebody that tries to put you down. So no matter what, I had my family behind me. My mom would drive me to bikini competitions when I was 17 years old just so I could do the competition in some bar in Chicago. And my parents always supported me. My father told me I could do whatever I wanted to do. So no matter what some person that I don't know and I don't care about said about me, as long as my family was supported, that's all that truly mattered to me. Thank you. And it's funny, coming off of that, I mean, that's uh, doing anything in this business, you're going to get that from, from anybody. Um, I hear it all the time, too, you know. I'm sure you get it from people like Joe Bruin, I mean, Hall of Fame, and, <clears throat> but you know something, it's those people down the line, like, can I get inducted? Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, it, yeah. it, it's one of those things, I mean. Well, let me ask you, I mean, I know you can't mention the location. I know you can't mention, actually, before, Christy, we're going to be closing out the, with the show with the Mario Mancini clip, so uh, it would be kind of fitting. That runs about two minutes, so we've got about five minutes worth here. Um, but I know you can't speak a location for next year. You won't give me any names as far as the deals or anything like that. Mm. But do you have any, is there anything you can get into regarding Next year's Hall of Fame. For example, I know Bobby Cruz, Ring of Honor uh, announcer, was scheduled for this year, but I knew Ring of Honor had the pay per view the following night. And um, but I did see something that was uh, posted online. I'll see in 2015. So is his induction getting moved to next year? Is that something that cause I know he wasn't there this year? Yeah, his induction's been bumped to 2015. Okay, um, that's confirmed. Okay. I, I can announce him. Bobby Cruz will. Will be there. He said it himself. That is there anybody? Do you know who's inducted the measure yet? No, no, we haven't gone that far yet. Um, I, there's two I like to and see. A lot of people think that I just choose all the inductors. No. I, mean, I leave the inductors up to the inductees. Okay. They okay. choose. They who choose they their want. own. They choose. And their again, own. and I know we discussed this. This is a heated topic online as far as what constitutes someone to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. We can get into that just a little bit again. Yeah. But I know when topic came up that Derek Null, A.K.A. Redemption. Yeah. Was it inducted? He's got more years than anybody. Mm -hmm. Could you see him being inducted sometime down the line? Oh, well, without a doubt. Uh, he's somebody who certainly deserves it, and like you said, has been doing it longer than some who have recently gone into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, he's not somebody that's been overlooked. Uh, but there's only so many you can do it. There's only so many you can do each each time. But I actually reached out to Derek. Um, what was his answer? We didn't speak. Okay. Uh, I reached out to him via Facebook. I now have his contact information, okay. which I got from some of the other boys, which is uh, is nice because I'm obviously going to reach out to him. Um, he's a talent who, especially here in Massachusetts, and he's been doing it forever. Yeah, Reverend Redemption. I, I remember as a young teenager had him, on, had him on this show many, many times, and great talker. The stories that he has yeah. it goes way, way, way back. So if he's listening to this or anybody involved... Um, we'll make sure we link him to it. And, uh, yeah, he's certainly not somebody who has ever been overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, he's somebody that I, I have been looking for and uh, now I've got the Facebook, him on Facebook and I've got his contact information. So mm -hmm. uh, once we start rolling out the red carpet of inductees for next year... Oh, that's not... Um, and that's another reason I can't confirm anybody. They're all in here, sure. 
but I haven't contacted them. So I want to make sure they know about it first before I yeah. announce it to the public. But I'll start rolling that out within the next month. Really? Um, so you sure you can't disclose the venue? Not yet? Can't do the venue yet. Okay. Or the date. I well, let me, I date could ask you that. Will Jaws drop once you announce it? The, the initial announcement? The, not necessarily the date, but the venue. You say, as much as the Crown Plaza was a gorgeous venue, yeah. you said we're going, you're going uh, to a different venue, which obviously it's gonna be an upscale, a bigger venue, uh, a more scaled out venue. A jaw, once you announce a jaw's gonna drop, and like, wow, I didn't see that coming. I'm just trying to get a visual of where you're going with this. Yeah, I, I think so. I think certain people will uh, be wowed by it. Um, I'm just enjoying, enjoying the ride, and I'm glad that um, with the help of, of others as well, that we're getting to those next levels. You know, it's, it's like a, a, a staircase. Okay, with that being said, let everybody know, obviously Joe uh, has these t-shirts here, which are available on the website. You can buy them right off the website, newenglandfanfest.com. Which is, if you look, it's New England Fest, Fan Fest 4. That's not a cheap one-sided t-shirt. You've got two sides, and this is something, I know you can't get it on TV, but these are some great, great graphics. And this shirt right here, I love tremendously. This is one that, I told Joe, I says, it's, it's, you've got the 2014 Hall of Fame, that's the front, and you got the back with Holly Race and Jim Neidhart, and you know this sucker's going in the frame, so with that, we want to say thank you, Joe. Absolutely. Um, but with that being said, to close out the show, we're going to go to Mario's uh, clip here. Um, people watching at home, obviously, we're going to have Japan watching, we're going to have anybody from any points on the globe that attended your Hall of Fame fan fest, hopefully to be watching this. This will be available on the station's website. Um, FIMedia.org, YouTube at youtube.com backslash wrestling spotlight, and here on channel 95, we're in Fall River for the whole entire month of July. There's the camera. If there's anything you'd like to tell the fans up until this point that have supported you, supported the Fan Fest, supported the Hall of Fame, because obviously, as much work as you put into it, without the paying fan, where would you be? Oh, exactly. I mean, the, the fans come first, and uh, New England Fan Fest has grown each year. We started in a Portuguese club with 40 people, <laughs> and uh, we did that for three years, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger each year. We outgrew that place, so thanks to the fans. Uh -huh. um, took it to the, uh, the seaport in Fairhaven, and we were there one year, outgrew the place, jam-packed. Um, I remember looking outside around 7 a.m., and there was a line that went around the side of the building outside. I was like, you know, just... Wow. And, uh, and then this year in the Crown Plaza, it was a great crowd and a uh, new location. So, you know, it's always an adjusting curve, but. Uh, and you said NewEnglandFanFest.com? NewEnglandFanFest.com is the official website. Okay, so with that being said, I want to thank Joe, obviously, for Absolutely. joining us thank here. Thank you for having me. And uh, just check back. I mean, I can't get it out of the Joe. He won't tell me. So uh, just check back to NewEnglandFanFest.com for the announcement of the venue, the date, and the stars to be announced for the 2015 New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame Fan Fest 5. Fan Fest 5. This is going to be a doozy, I can feel it. I'm excited. With that being said, <laughs> thanks for watching. And uh, we actually, we'll see you back here uh, Tuesday, August 5th for a special feature with Pete, myself, and uh, uh, highlight clips uh, featured for uh, Lucky Pro Wrestling, which they will be uh, returning to Clinton, Massachusetts, Saturday, August the 9th, and at the Elks Lodge in Clinton. So. Check back here Tuesday, uh, August 5th for a new episode. But until then, you get to see this all over again in the month of July. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. 1988, I, I decided, well, you know what? I, I think this is, this is what it's going to be. So indeed, I decided to be the best damn loser <laughs> I could be. And meaning that is, you know, I started talking to the, even in house shows, I started talking to the guys that I was, I was putting over, and then I was making suggestions. Um, and, you know, Hercules Hernandez, may he rest in peace, you know, he looked at me one day, he said, man, see, you're the best damn job I've ever seen in my life. And I said, I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult, but I actually I took it as a compliment. Um, you know, as I tell everybody, you know, when it was over in 92, you know, I kind of got up and said, gee, I, I wish that went a little differently. You know, but it, it didn't. Um, but you know what, what I did, I was a professional at what I did. I knew what I had to do, and I knew what my job was. And there were guys that were injured that actually handpicked me to work with, like like the Honky Tonk Man and, and like the 
John Studd. And, you know, I'm the guy in the ring. You, you know, sometimes, you know, guys, things will happen in the ring that will shock people. I was in Middletown, New York one time, and I threw my opponent in the ring, and the entire ring collapsed. Wow. Now, you, you, you know, the ropes, they just fell. And you better know what to do and how to carry out a match without ropes. You better be experienced and know, know how to do that and get the guy over. As my trainer, Tony Altamar, used to say when we were in wrestling school, I'm not going to let you out.